Yes, I am recording it. There we go. Thank you. Um, and I will be putting this on, I've already set up the page for this on our website with this presentation. Feel free to download it. And if you have any questions, I'm always available to answer questions. So as I always say, my name is Miriam Golabir and I'm the Chief Amazement Officer of Digital Marketing Experts. And we, I've been in the industry for 17 years. Seven years ago, I uh, decided that I'm going to fly solo and start my own business. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I've met incredible people, um, such as yourself, Peter, and a um, slew of others that have helped me over the years learn so much more and grow my business based on the knowledge that I've gained. I believe in creating a sustainable digital marketing strategy, which means we want to make sure that whatever we're doing is going to have alt continuous results and it's based on conversion, not a one-time click strategy. One-time click strategies is when we do, you know, a small campaign to advertise our business or we do a small social media strategy. We want to build something that we've, we've created a foundation for it and then build on top of that. So let's get started. If you have any questions, I'm always available. Um, my, I'm going to be sending you guys an email with um, the presentation and the video of this presentation so you can see where we, what we talked about today. Um, as I said, Google My Business is a very powerful tool. It allows you to be on the first pages of Google and it allows you to be on the map. 89% um, of Canadians use their cell phones to look for things or look for um, information that they're looking for businesses they want to buy things from or to go to a location to a business that has a brick and mortar store um, and in order for that to happen you have to be on the map um, and in order for you to be on the map you need to have a Google my business account so the first thing you do is you type in Google my business and then it's uh, the either the ad or the second listing it says Google my business and you click on that so once you click on it the second step is log into your Gmail account. Almost everybody um, that I've spoken with has a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you have to set up a Gmail account in order for you to be able to take advantage of Google's um, multiple products and services that they have available. So what you do is you set up a Gmail address. Um, if you're gonna be using it for business purposes, um, or even personal. Now, there's two scenarios to this. If you're going to be using it for business purposes, it makes sense to set it up under your business name at gmail.com. Um, if you are the face of the company, you can set it up as you. That's fine. However, that works for you. Um, go with some, I always recommend to do the double de verification or the two verification login, which means when you set it up, they'll send you a text message to your phone and then you can. Um, connect yourself with your, uh, you can connect yourself with your account through your phone. Um, we set up an account for a client. Luckily, because we were still in the middle of the setup, I put my contact information, my cell phone number in as for the double verification. I usually move it over to the client once we're done with it. We were so lucky that we did this because within seconds, uh, within like a couple of minutes or you know, a few minutes from where we set it up, their account was being used because they used the generic uh, password, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, and then but a couple other numbers at the end. Um, and I highly recommend not to do that. Go with the password that's easy for you to remember, but not so easy that you, it can get hacked. If I didn't have the double verification set up on my phone, I wouldn't have known that because it asked me that someone's trying to log into your account from Russia. And I was like, no, we're in Toronto. No one's trying to log in from Russia. So go with a good password if you don't have one, uh, set up a double verification and set up your account. So once you set up your account, here you sign in, it will ask you to sign into your account. Some of us, me for example, I have uh, multiple accounts set up for multiple clients. So I have to always go in and uh, save under the right client. So if you have multiple accounts, before you set up your Google My Business, always check to see which account you're logged into before you set up your Google My Business. So set up your Gmail address. And uh, again, here, this is where you put your actual uh, email address and then you hit next. And then it takes you to the second step, which is google.com slash business. 
Here, if you've already logged in to your, if you're using Chrome browser, here it will not ask you to log in. Again, it will just take you straight to the page that you need to go. Um, there's a button called Start Now that you have to click on. If you don't see that, it will say Manage Now, and you can click on either one. So if it's a Start Now, that means you haven't set up your account, so you have to set it up. If it's Manage Now, that means you've already set it up and you're about to manage it. So if you have not set your account up, what you do here is you put your business name. Now, what I always recommend is to write everything in a Word document so you're, there's no spelling mistake, there's no mistake in the email that you're entering, there's no mistake in the description. You've checked everything in the Word document before you go ahead and start inputting the information in there. So here you put your business name. Do not put your company's, uh, unless if your company is only operating under the number company, do not put your number company in there. Um, always go with the, the alias that your company is going with or the full company name. Number companies will not come up on the map. Only full companies come up on the map. So if you cannot, so what you do is you put your business name in there and it will say, um, can't find your business name. Don't worry about that. Just add, click on the add your business to Google email. I'm oh, sorry, the link that you see at the bottom. So you put your company name and then you add it. Once you add it, this is my company name, Digital Marketing Experts. Read the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. Now, you don't, everybody says, well, you don't have to because we know what it is. Yes, but what if there's something in there that doesn't fit your business? Take the time and read it. I always say if there's any sort of an, anything that you're agreeing to, any terms, read it before you agree to it. So read that and then click next. So then it takes you to, this is a very important area because it says, what's the category of your business? Now, my business, I'm an advertising agency. So if I put the word advertising, it gives me uh, a similar category that Google offers, which is the advertising agency. But I can also go as a technology firm. But if I go as a technology firm, am I going to come up when someone's looking for advertising? No, you will only come up Add the category that you really want to come up for because you only will come up for that one category. So if your business is real estate, but your folk main focus is commercial and not real uh, and not residential and you want you, your money maker is your commercial, put the commercial real estate. You still will come up for the word real estate, but now you're coming up for what your money maker is. So put the proper category in certain cases, Depending on the type of business that you have, if it's an innovative you know, business that you've come up with and there's not a lot of solutions out there similar to yours, Google will not have a category for you. And then there will be an other category. And then when you choose the other category, you can enter the, the, the proper name of that category. If that doesn't come up, you have to find where you fit the, the, the closest. So if you're a business consultant and I mean, if you fall into the business consultant feed, the uh, business consultant category, then put that one up. Then you click next and then it takes you to, do you want to add a location customers can visit like a store or an office? So there's tons of people that operate from home or there are tons of people that have multiple locations. So if you have multiple locations that what would make sense is um, we have a client who they have multiple offices all throughout Ontario. We have set up um, a Google, my business account, uh, sorry, a Google, my business, um, listing for every single office that they have in Ontario. If you have that, just then pick, you can set one and then go set another one for another location, set another one for another location. If you work from home and you don't want people to come to your door, then say, I don't have a physical office that people can come to. That way you don't have to worry about changing that office uh, address ongoingly. We have a location where people can go to, um, but, our new issue is that we closed that location due to COVID. So now we are, I'm, I'm operating from home. My team's operating from home and we're trying to figure out, do we, what do we do? We go to another office and we add another office or are we going to um, work from home? And in that case, we have to remove the address piece. One thing you should not do is do not put a PO box number. Um, mainly because PO box numbers are used by, um, if you, sorry, let me explain that. If you have a PO box number in like a location where, um, you know, it's like a post office, what usually happens is a lot of other companies have um, bought in the same area. 
So you will not come up for that address if you want to come up for address on the map. So think about these things before you set up your account. Then it's going to ask you, where do you serve your customers? This is important because if I operate out of uh, King City, my office is, my house is in King City, but most of my clients are from York region. So I have clients in Markham, in Newmarket, in Aurora, um, but my, uh, and my physical office was in Newmarket. And I would say Newmarket, and then I would also add, I have another listing that I would do for Aurora because most of my clients were coming from those areas. If you only primarily work with one particular location, you can add one location or you can select multiple areas. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is make sure you're picking the Canadian one if you are only operating in Canada. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, the same areas listed in other countries as well. Then you're going to end up and, and, and entering your contact information in your, um, you know, the, in, into this listing. Now, um, there's two options. You can either put in your, your telephone number um, and your website, or you can just do whichever you're comfortable with. Um, they provide, once you have Google My Business listing set up, they do provide you with an option of having a makeshift website through Google My Business if you don't have one already. If you have one, you can put it in. It's a good thing to put that website in there because a lot of you get you you'd be surprised how many extra people that you didn't think that would end up on your website are actually looking for you through Google My Business. So make sure you have your company website in there. So once you're done with all of that, I always go back and I check everything just to make sure I did the correct spelling of my company name, I put in the right address, the right information, um, and then I hit, once I'm comfortable with everything that I've set up, then I hit finish. And when I do this, then it's gonna ask me ways that I wanna verify that this business is real and it's not some fake thing that I put up. And then I usually say I, uh, I like either a phone call or a postcard. Up until recently, their only option was a postcard. So you'll get a postcard in the mail and it has like a number in it and then you have to go by and verify it. Now, instant verification is when they call you and then they give you a, a code on the phone and then you add it in right away. There's another thing called the bulk verification. That's when you have multiple offices and you've set up multiple addresses under um, your Google My Business. And then they say, well, I'm gonna verify everything that you've put in under this account. Either way, whatever you find it easy to do, do so. However, remember one thing, if you're about to get um, a phone call, make sure it's always through a cell phone, not a house line. Um, mainly because sometimes what they do is they call the number and then they send the, they verify that number with a code that they SMS to it. And they, you may or may not, depending on who your house line is with, not get, uh, or that office line is with, may or may not get that verification code. So make sure it's a cell phone that you use. So you can choose, I, you can either say I wanna, um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to add in. So if you're doing a postcard by mail, let's say if you are running the business and you have a secretary that um, takes care of um, the front, or if you have a manager that deals with that particular business that you have already the office, you wanna make sure to put that name of the person in there and give them a call and say, hey, you're getting something from the mail through Google, take a look and see how it works. Um, if you're putting an address, then, oh, PO boxes, you may or may not get your listing via mail. Uh, we've had a client, we have two clients in the past that didn't get their um, mail because it was a PO box. So if that's the case, then ask for an email or ask for a phone number that they can connect and give you the verify and verify your business. Now, so the postcard verification is that you have to log into your Google My Business and then make sure your business address is correct. Um, that's the other thing. So, oh, for us, for example, the location that we were in, they couldn't come to the front door to drop the mail off. They had to come to the side door to drop the mail off. And 90% of the times they didn't know so that the lady that was in the front would collect all the mail and go up. And then whatever she did realize that it wasn't her, she would drop it at the ground. So you want to make sure that you have instructions in there to where to put the, um, the actual mail. 
Then you want to click on the mail and the postcard. And then it takes about five to six. My apologies. My dog just walked into my room. One sec. Sorry. Um, you want to make sure that you, um, it takes about five to six days to get that mail. And you want to make sure that you have, uh, you give it enough time and check. And if you don't get it within five days, just look at it and look at the mail and connect with them and, and try to verify it again. Uh, step four is you've got a postcard. You log into your Google account. It comes with a giant blue lettering. Um, the code is five digit um, verification code. And then it tells you what, where to go. On that mail piece you get, there is a Google my, google.com slash forward my business. You go back in there, you log in, and then it tells you where to put that log, uh, the code to verify and hit submit. So if your um, mail never shows up, contact, go back and request another code. And then it will again ask you, do you want it with, through mail or do you want it via phone call or uh, an email? And in which case you can pick what works for you. Now, if you have a Gmail address, but your company name is a, and if you entered your URL uh, for your website and that's a different address, what they would do is they would send it to where your company URL is, not to your Gmail, because anybody can set up a Gmail address and set, set it up. So uh, remember these things when you are trying to request for your verification. So phone verification is actually super easy. What they do is they give you a call and they'll repeat the verification code super slow. And then uh, you want to make sure that you've given them the right number. And uh, when they get the code, you, you are going to receive it via text. So get that code and then enter it into the verify your business section. Uh, you want to go into your Google My Business and click on the listing once you're done with uh, verifying it and update the information that you provide. Um, you want to give as much information as possible because it's easy for people. Like we pick a location based on what our needs and requirements are. Um, so you want to make sure if you are a place that offers um, act, uh, realtor accessibility to add that in there. If you are a business that you know deal uh, provides your services in multiple languages, you want to add that in there. Um, these are all give you one leg up over your competitors. So you want to put as much information as possible. So what the other thing that happens is from time to time, people feel that they need to suggest edits to your listings. And that's an option that Google unfortunately offers. And you don't want to leave any room for them to offer any, suggest any edits. Um, you want to offer as much information as possible that's accurate in there so you reduce the amount of suggestions that people are suggesting. And the reason that is, is because let's say if you have put yourself under the category of technology, but you're really an ad agency and people constantly call you and, you're, the, the, and, and they're asking you if you're a technology company and you're like, no, I'm an ad agency. So what happens is you're gonna get multiple people that suggest that you should change your category, edit your category to an ad agency instead of a technology company. And if there's so many suggestions, Google will make that change for you. So you don't want that. You want it to be as accurate as possible. So this is what it looks like in the back end when once you're verified and you're ready to go. And here you can see that we have home. You can, uh, that's the home page that you're looking at right now. On the left, you can also see posts. Posts are a really good way to add more content that's related to your business on a different platform. So most of us have a website. We have a blog attached to our websites. Uh, we have social media platforms that we use, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. And this is another good way to come up for certain words through your posts. So let's say if you have a really good post on um, your website and you wanna shine some light towards it, what you do is you write another post on your Google My Business describing that amazing post that you have on your website and you, and you say, well, by the way, we have tons of good information, plus you can go on our website and look at it. So posts are really good. Um, info is where you can add it and add more information about the business that you have and the services that you offer. Uh, insights is where you get the most amount of an analytics and it provides information about uh, you know, how many people have looked at your site, 
uh, sorry, your Google My Business, how many people have clicked on, contact us, about us, website, and so forth. Then reviews are very important. This is when people review your business and leave you a review. And it's very important and it's crucial that if anybody leaves you a review, that you go ahead and respond to it. Whether it's negative or positive, always respond to a review, thank them for leaving a review. If it was negative, ask them to take it offline and talk about it. And if it was positive, positive thank them for leaving you a fantastic review. Um, messaging is when you can have a conversation with someone. Then there's photos. I always fill my photos in there and I will show you guys. Uh, photos are great because if you, um, let's say, are, are a restaurant or uh, you have a makerspace or if you have a hub where people can get uh, congregate or learn something new, you want to take those pictures and post them. Then uh, services that you offer, those are the services that you have to fill in and say these are like we provide internet marketing services, marketing, we're an ad advertising agency, we're a marketing agency, we provide web hosting, web design, marketing consulting, and so forth. And website is that makeshift website I was telling you about that they can help you create a small little website if you don't have one. It's a really cool tool. It costs you. There's a monthly fee attached to it. So uh, look at the cost before you go ahead and set it up. Um, depending on how big you want this website to be, that cost may vary. Users are if I want to add in my team members into my Google My Business and allow them to make edits. Now, think about that carefully before you give anybody else additional access to your Google My Business. Uh, think of the relationship you have with them. How is this relationship going to move forward as time goes by? And if you would like to have them I have access to your account. Um, create an ad is a tool that attaches um, your Google My Business to your AdWords account. I have to emphasize on this. When you create an ad using your Google My Business, you pay double. Whereas if you create an AdWords account and ask to use it as an expert and not as just an express ad, you pay half of that. So think about that before you buy any ads. So what happens usually is when you start a Google My Business, they'll give you a hundred dollar credit that you can buy ads from. So you spend $50 and you get a hundred. It's $150 of ad spend. But if you use Google Ad Express, okay, that money will be gone within days because your clicks are worth about a dollar plus. However, if you set up a Google AdWords as an expert, you can have the exact same ads running and only pay anywhere between 10 cents to 12 cents per click for those dollar plus ads, okay? So think about that. You can add a new location. If you've moved or you have a multiple locations, you can add that as well. You can manage your locations. This is for clients that have, uh, or people that have multiple locations. We, our client that has a location all throughout Ontario, we have 20 some odd offices, we can manage our locations there. You can link your other accounts to it. So let's say if you have another Google My Business for that you set in the past, and now you decided that you wanna have another one, you can link all of that as well. So uh, let's get into this a little bit. This is what people will see when um, they go on the map or they're looking for digital marketing services and I come up first or they're looking for the exact word digital marketing experts and then I come up first on the Google uh, search engines. This will I'll always be on the right side and you can see the amount of uh, reviews that we've got. Uh, you can see our website, direction to our office, the hours that were open, telephone number, pictures, and map, and so forth. And that, I have to go into the info section in order for me to be able to edit that information. So, oh, sorry, there we go. So this is called, this is the photo section that I was telling you about. I put in videos and photos in here um, because I have a there's a reason, there's an agenda behind it. When someone looks for me and I have a video that I've created and I put that in there, they have noticed that, oh, I've been, you know, I've been creating good content. And if I've been somewhere or if I have a uh, 360 view of our previous offices or I've hosted an event uh, or I've been part of an event, I always put those information in there as well. And I always follow it with a good description and a good title that describes what I do and what my business is about. 
you kind of want to do that because you want not kind of you definitely want to do that because it actually helps grow um the the amount of content that's created under your company name now this is the type of services that i offer i wonder if i can make this a little bit bigger no okay i can't so these are the type of services we offer if you go into the service section my apologies this is hold on one sec here we go if you go to the service section you can see that we have um the top category services which is internet marketing and then we have tons of subcategories under it which is search engine optimization social media advertising social media marketing uh, online advertising ppc and so forth if you can set it up so let's say you work you do real estate um you, you have your residential you have your commercial and then you have condos again i guess that falls under a separate category or sorry let that's um agricultural let's say you you have three agricultural commercial and real estate uh, and residential so under that you could add in you know um industrial locations you can add in condos you can add in farms you can add in you, there's subcategories try to fill as much as you can because that helps you come up for words and keywords and key phrases that people are looking um, for the services you offer. So make sure you add all of that in there. So why are the benefits of Google My Business? Well, Google My Business allows you to appear on the map and local path listing. And this is important because if, um, if you're a restaurant and because of COVID you had to close your doors for four months, and you're, you, you've been offering, you know, delivering and takeouts, um, if you weren't on the map, then I wouldn't look for you. Hi, can you guys hear me? My apologies, I don't know what just happened. Yes, oh. I can hear you. Okay, wonderful. My apologies, everyone. Just disconnected. Okay, let me go back to this. Wonderful. Okay, so what are the benefits? You want to be on the map uh, because you are always going to be number one when it comes to searches. So being on the map, it actually helps you stay on the, on the top of the page. You also want to be on the map because if you're not on the map and if, even if you have a very successful business, because a lot of people are searching online to look for businesses, it's really hard to get you um, out in front of their eyes. If, and, and, and the map, it's actually optimized, which adds into the optimization your, your website receives, even though, um, even if your website doesn't have the proper optimization set up on it. And again, here's an example of it. R01 Thai Bistro is number one on the map. And um, being on the map, and especially because it's, in, it's, it's on its own category, because it has more, the most amount of reviews um, that are positive, it comes higher up. So you want to make sure that you're up there. The local pack is very visible. So, and it's a lot of real estate on the Google search results that you're getting where your competitors are not going to be getting. And it enables people to see um, all the information about who you are and what you're about and how people have reviewed you in like one, one glance. And search engine result pages will display places related to your search. And if I'm looking for you know, Thai restaurants near me and you have, you know, the most amount of reviews and you, your Google My Business page has tons of information and has your menu and it has everything that I need, obviously you're going to come further first up and I, you will be my number one potential uh, business that I want to use. And the, make sure you have the store hours, if there's a way that they can connect with you right away, if, you, if they need reservations, everything, make sure it's all in there. So it also allows people to leave a review for your business. Now, some people say this is a bad thing, but I absolutely love it because we um, make business decisions based on word of mouth. We make decisions based on what our friends have told us about a business. And now I'm able to read what people are actually saying about you. And a lot of these individuals are not paid 
all of them are not paid to leave a good review, hopefully. Um, so let's say Veggie House, if you look at the reviews and they're all positive, and if this company has was, was really smart and they went ahead and thanked people for this awesome review that was left for them, uh, more people would leave good reviews. And we're more likely to work with a business that others like and they've done a good job with what they've done than a company that nobody likes to work with and everybody has something negative to say about them. So the power of customer review is really, really, really important. And it's, it's, you, it will make or break a business. One thing that you should never do, and this is very important. Three years ago, we worked with this company um, that they just came back recently to work with us again. Uh, three years ago, they bought 2,000 reviews for their business. All the reviews were bots. They were robots. So all the reviews were, yes, great, love them, fantastic. There were one-word reviews or really cool people. Or the, and then they, they all left four stars or five stars for them. And then all of a sudden, this company lost their ranking on the Google searches. We didn't know what the problem was. It took us weeks to figure out why this has happened until they finally told us the truth that they had bought robot, uh, bought reviews. Google killed their ranking because of the bots. So if you don't have good reviews, call up your clients and ask them for real reviews. Never buy reviews. Never, 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 never buy reviews. Um, even if it's your last option and nobody wants to give you a review, try not having it. It's fine if you don't have any reviews. It's fine. You don't have to have a review. Do not buy them. It will kill your ranking. Um, reviews improve local SEO. Remember I told you because they're on Google Map is optimized, you will always be higher up. It does impact your local search engine optimization. It increases sales because if people, other people like you, They'll tell their friends, every happy client brings, I think, 20 clients and every unhappy client takes 70. There's a ratio to that. I don't know exact numbers. Uh, review shows that customer, you know, think about your business and they either like you very much or they don't. Even if they don't like you, if you, if you try to deal with that negative review right away and say, hey, I'm sorry you're upset. Things happened and it was out of our control. We are very sorry. Can we take this offline and make it up to you? And once that happens and you do make it up to them, ask that person that has left you a bad neg negative review that you just rectified the situation to go ahead and put an update to what you did and what you went out of your way to do to get a better review, uh, to, get a, to, to show them that you care about their business. What happens is this is a big deal to the rest of the world. It shows that you care. It's your customer service. You went out there to make sure that this you went out of your way to make sure this customer is happy. And now this customer is happy and there's telling the world, yes, I'm happy. They went out of their way. They made me feel comfortable. So never underestimate how a customer's negative review can actually impact your business. So it's a perfect example. Unreliable. Waited for two days before they could send anything, anyone out. Plumbers shouldn't have done that. But then if you look at the bottom, look, we're truly sorry that you had this experience with our company. We understand uh, that your time is valuable and we did not arrive within the schedule window. So they're admitting that they made a mistake. Uh, we have taken your feedback into consideration and we will work on improving our system. Glad to be able to resolve your plumbing issues because they went out there and they tried to deal with this issue right away. And, um, you know, consider, well, thank you for considering our company. So try to take it offline, deal with it so that they will show that you, even if this customer is unhappy, it showed that th these guys went out of their way to respond. And there's a response from the owner of the company. Um, it also gives you an insight. So Google My Business provides insight that gives you helpful information. So it gives you all the tools and it, it, it's not only promoting your products and services, but it also helps you understand the market. Um, the insights that's available through Google My Business, it allows you to see, okay, well, half of these people clicked on my web services and only 2% clicked on my, um, you know, 
internet services. Maybe I should focus on my ad services and my web services more than I do with other products that I have. And that's where this insight comes. So if you click on insight, this is what you will see. It's a breakdown as to what keywords they use to find you, um, what where on the map you showed up the most, and uh, what devices they use. And this comes from Google Analytics as well. So if you have Google Analytics set up on your website, in addition to this insight, you're golden because you can see so much more about your business. Um, it's free and it's easy to use. I mean, like if you think about it, when it comes to online marketing, um, there's a lot of loopholes that you need to know a little bit about before you can understand how to do it. So when it comes to optimizing, optimizing your website or how to buy ads, you need to kind of study it and understand it. Whereas with this one, it's super easy. All you got to do is log in and fill in the right amount of information that's related to your business and you know about it. And once you do that, it's easy for startups and local businesses to, you know, promote their services and, um, and products online. And it increases your visibility locally. And uh, it also depends, uh, and maybe internationally. We were in, we went vacationing, my husband and I, a few years ago in Ireland and Scotland. We were there for about two months. And um, we, everywhere we went was based on what Google Map had suggested as tourists. So, we saw the best of Ireland and the best of Scotland because of our Google map that we had with us. So think about that. If whatever your, the nature of your business is, Google map and Google my business does help your business grow and increase its visibility. So this is the end of the um, presentation. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd be more than glad to answer them for you. Let me stop sharing. And again, thank you to York Small Business Enterprise Center for making this possible. And I'm going to stop sharing this. Uh, there's a chat. Oh, here we go. I have to hop off at the ten. Oh, Peter, it was an absolute pleasure to speak to you. I have your contact info and I will uh, reach out to you. Can you explain the user feature? Yes. Um, so Cody, if you, Let's say uh, you hire Miriam, me, to do marketing for you. And then you hire Josh to manage your accounts, your online accounts. And you go to Google My Business section of, that says user, and you want Josh to take over all the responses, and that, that all the reviews and respond back to them. And you want Miriam to optimize that page for you. And you want Miriam to run all the ads. What you do is you click on the user section and then you give Miriam access. Now you can decide what level of access you want to give me. You can decide that I will become admin or I can just, you know, manage or edit or respond to reviews. Um, that's how you control who has access to your uh, users that have access to certain features on your Google My Business. I hope that helped. Any other question, guys? Okay. So this recording will be available online within the next few minutes. And then what I'll do is I'm sending you guys an email with uh, a link to the site and a link to, I'm gonna show you where it is. It's gonna be on our website, it, the presentation. And then the video will be also added in there as well. So you can see um, what we talked about. And if you had any questions, feel free to contact me. And thanks again for joining our webinar. Have yourself a good day, guys. Oh, can you email us the slides? Absolutely, Cody. It will be um, in an email that I'm sending out in like a few minutes. You're more than welcome. Take care, everyone.